What's the tea? Mm, I don't know if I like that. Mm, whatever. It's me, I'm back again. <laughs> Girl, rock tape. I've got two which color is right for me. What is going on? Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to this video if you have not. And click the bell and join. Get the notification when I get these videos because my videos are random. So I want you to be the first to see it. Don't judge my hat. I know my hat is a little funky. I tried to do one of those new cool things, but I need a haircut so I can't not wear a hat right now. But you know, that's neither here nor there. But anyways, let's get to the topic at hand. Today, we are going to talk about gay lingo. I'm actually going to instruct some of you on what gay lingo is. A lot of people don't know, but most gay people are actually bilingual. Being gay is something where you have to know certain terms and terminology and phrases and different things just to be able to navigate a regular conversation at times. And that is why I'm here to help you guys learn how to navigate this conversation. But first, I have a disclaimer. And I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. If you are not gay, you shouldn't even be using gay lingo. That's that's pretty much it. But anyways, if you if you decide to use gay lingo, I want you to understand how to use it correctly and what ways to say certain things. And the different means we have certain things. Because you can get red or shaded and not even know. And you probably don't know what getting red or shaded means. But that's why I'm here to teach you. Am I recording? <laughs> So first, we're going to start off with a very simple, very, a very nice list. It's going to be about like 10 to 11 terms, you know, simple. This is gay lingo one-on-one. -on -one. We're not doing too much, not doing too less. Let's start off with a simple word like T, T-E-A. Now, T can mean a lot of different things. Like, I can use it in a sentence to be like, girl, what's T? Girl, what's up? That's literally what it means. What's up? What's the T? What you doing? What's the information? Like, what's up? What's the information? What's the T? But also, someone can make a T. Now, this may be something, I'm from Virginia, and this may be something that we only say in Virginia, but if someone says they're about to make a T, that means they're about to go, you know. Ooh, <laughs> but it's, it can go either way. That's how I use T. And again, hold on, before we continue with anything else, if you have any disclaimers or if you use a word differently than me, feel free to comment below. Let me know how to use it. And when I do a gay lingo part two, I'll definitely incorporate your choice of usage. <laughs> anyway, so T. What's the T? You know, or you can make a T. But also, there's a third definition of T that I like to say for me personally. There's a couple people I know that use it like this, but I don't want to say that's how a word is, is used. But you can also use T in a way of man he's the t like he's it he is like he's fine he looks like if you the t you the t like you are good or whatever so that's t moving on let's let's start off with how natural a lot of gay people are with this next word the word is shady shade i'm sure you all heard the being someone being shady or someone um, saying no shade. I just want you to know, I don't care what you knew before, gays made up that terminology. So, we're not going to get credit for it because, you know, this is our country and who in this country actually supports and appreciate gay people? Not the people that use everything that we do and teach them. But anyways, that's the end of it. Moving on. So, shade. Shade is someone, shade is pretty much like letting you know that you are I don't know how to break it down. I have to go back from a quote from a documentary called Paris is Burning. Shade comes from reading. Reading is pretty much letting someone know like about themselves. And not necessarily a negative way, but it could be. Like if you come in and you look tacky, I'm like, girl, that blue shirt is not for you. Like, ugh. But see, there's ways that you can get around being shady without being shady. And the equivalent of being shady without being shady is simply by saying no shade. It sounds really weird. It's almost like a no homo thing because like, you say no homo, that means you have to do something gay for cis, he, cis, cis hetero men. They say no homo for those cases. But for shade, you can say no shade, and it can be a completely shady statement. But the no shade technically is supposed to cancel out the statement. So I can be like, girl, no shade, but that wig is not it. 
I mean, she has a bad wig on, and I wasn't trying to be shady to you, so I let you know. But also, if I said, girl, this lopsided Bob the Builder ass wig you got on, that's a read, and in that read, I shaded you. You see how it works? <laughs> the two coincide. Shade, reading. Reading comes first. So remember, to order to get shade, to order to shade someone, you need to go know how to read. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you do not know how to read, you don't need to, you don't need to be walking around shady. Because a lot of people think they could just walk in a place and demand a room and just be shady at everybody and looking at people up and down and whispering and all oh, whispering. Whispering, new word. Um, and doing all this other stuff. But sweetie, <laughs> you shade the wrong person, it's gonna be no hoes bars once they get to read it. And that's no shade. <laughs> Moving on. Um, next we have Butch Queen. So Butch Queen definition, I guess, has changed over the years. Um, when I first was coming up as a gay man or a gay boy to a gay man, Butch Queen to me was a Butch Queen was taught to me as a gay person that can switch the roles between masculine and feminine very easy or simultaneously live the, live in the same roles. Um, so I consider myself a Butch Queen. A lot of gay people are Butch Queens, but technically every black gay male is a Butch Queen because a Butch Queen is essentially just a black gay male. I guess the definition changes because the Queen word people got a little too. You know, you know what the girls give, child. So, it has turned to this new definition of being able to be masculine and being able to be feminine at the same time or being able to switch back and forth between them literally at the switch of a dime. So, that's what a butch queen is. Um, so, now there's levels of it. We have butch queen. I like to say butch queen's in the middle. And at the very end of the spectrum, we have this word called trade. So, and actually, it's funny because this word gets used. And one of the examples this word is used in the In My Feelings song by Drake. I got a new boy and that nigga Trey. Kiki, he up on me. Anyways, Trey is basically a very, very masculine man that is not clockable. That is what Trey is to me. Now, people have their very different definitions. But we're going to go and say Trey is a very masculine man that is not clockable. When I say clockable, this man, you see him, you would not think, know where that this man is gay. Like, you wouldn't think he's gay. Not saying gay looks a certain way. But if this man told you he was gay, you probably would be like, girl, excuse me? Like, that's what trade is. But then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I like to say it's cunt. Cunt is a very feminine word. I mean, very feminine person. Cunt, C-U-N-T. Very controversial world, word in the white world. But, you know, in the gay world, what's controversy? So, cunt is a very... My, my scale is backward, isn't it? This should be cunt. This should be trade. Anyways, whatever it is, cunt is a very feminine person. Masculine is a very... Cunt is a very feminine person and trade is a very masculine person. And Butch Queen is right in the middle. And that is to me is what I feel like that's a good spectrum. I mean a good scale. And if you have and if you can fall anywhere on that spectrum, that spectrum does not have it's not just those three categories. Those are just three common categories that I have learned growing up. Um, when it comes to the type of gay man and the way they carry themselves. At the end of the day, we all gay. So you like dick in the butt, you like putting your dick in the butt, you like a dick in the mouth, you like putting a dick in your mouth, or you like doing something with a dick, or something with a man. Something with the gender you identify as as a man, and you, you're attracted to the same gender, which is a man, gay. So we all do the same thing, but you know, we like to put stuff on scales because it just helps us move better. Next word I have, let's talk about these. First of all, moving forward, if you are not gay, Actually, it don't matter. If you're not interested in someone sexually, you shouldn't even ask what, what their sexual position is. But let me just tell you guys, let me teach you the right proper terminology. Because I'm tired of hearing who's the woman in the relationship. I'm tired of hearing who's the pitcher, who's the catcher. I'm tired of hearing all these different things. We have three categories. Top, bottom, verse. That's it. Now, there's some subcategories, but we're going to keep it simple for this lesson. A top is someone that puts their penis in a butthole. Usually, most of the time, if that's what you prefer to do, you are considered a top. Now, there's some stipulations on what tops can and cannot do, whatever. Some people don't like their tops twerking or whatever. That's not my business. If you like putting your dick in a butt solely, you're a top. A bottom is someone that likes getting dick in their butt. I know these words are very, this is a very raw video, but essentially that's what it is. So, if you like putting dick in your booty hole, you're a bottom. There's nothing wrong with that. I, myself, it won't actually, 
So then in the middle, we have Burst. Burst is someone that likes to top, but also likes to bottom. You see how easy that is? Top, bottom, verse. Again, you really shouldn't ask anybody what their sexual position is, especially if you're not even gay. So if you're a woman, don't ask somebody what they're doing, because guess what? It don't matter. It don't matter. If I work with you, why you want to know what I do in my bedroom? There's no reason. If I am just gay and I'm your friend, why does it matter what my position is? Now, if I'm your real friend, you should already know. And I understand, like, you, there are some times where you sh sh do have to ask. Prime example is getting to know someone. Sometimes you can't tell. Like I said, let's go back earlier to the video. Some butch queens aren't clockable and some butch queens are bottoms. Some butch queens are full tops. And you will never know. They also have femme tops who are people that put a whole face of makeup on and all this stuff and child will wear you out in a heartbeat. So don't gag. But it's also some people that will bench press 400 pounds, muscular down, wear sneakers, all this, but child, Takes dicks like a champ. Tiana Trump is shook. No shade. But you know, that's neither here nor there. That's just the tea. Okay. <laughs> this feeling very rehearsing. Because it is. And I really, I have practiced this. I, this video is supposed to be recorded. I had a flu. I do apologize. That's neither here nor there. Anyways, moving on. The next. What's next? Oh, okay. These next ones are just like little, full, little play play words. So the next word is slay. So I'm, I put slay in this because I really want people to stop saying, yes, yeah, slay, bitch, when people are walking in sweatpants into Walmart. I don't know if you have been subscribed to my video earlier. Um, if you have been subscribed to my channel, I have talked about this. Um, slay is someone that is in a full effect. An effect is like a nice outfit, like down to the ground, like not even labeled, just like they are in it. That's what slang is. Slang is just a exude, someone that's exuding confidence. So I get, I guess I can understand when you think you see a gay person walking somewhere, you're like, yeah, she better slay. But also you need to understand they can be exuding that confidence, but if they don't look like the confidence they exude and they're not really slaying much. Now, are they? Mm, no. But that's what slay is. So be careful how you slay because y'all like to tell people they're slaying and they're not. And that's why we have these work this pussy video and all these girls voguing looking a mess now because you're telling them they're slaying when they really just need to pay it. Which brings me on to my next thing, paying it. My favorite saying is just pay it. Just pay it, P-A-Y-I-T, pay it. Pay it just means, girl, let it go, pay it, let it go, drop it, it's not worth it. Pay it, sis, pay it. That's what pay it means, just ignore it. So if someone tells you just pay something, they're not telling you to literally put up money for something. Actually, in this new scammer culture, they may be doing that. But that's what they not, they shouldn't be doing that. So if someone, if someone tells you to pay something, it literally means to pay it. Like, ignore that situation. Get out of it, girl. Pay it. Like, ugh. But anyways, that's what pay it means. Now, moving on to the next word, which is beat. Now, this word get, this probably gets used a whole lot because a lot of makeup artists use this word, which tells you the definition. Beat is when your face is given, shout out, like, it is, ugh. Down, Mac, Mac everywhere, Fancy Beauty out. You got all the brushes, contour is cunt, nose is pointy, chin is up, eyelash, eyebrow, um, nice eyeshadow, beats. Like, girl, it look like someone beat your ass, your face looks so goddamn good. That's what it beat me. So if someone said, girl, you look beat, like, ooh. Now it's an emphasis on it, though. Now if someone said, girl, you look beat, that just means, girl, you look like you need to go in the house and wash your face a little bit and look like someone actually hit you. But if someone says, girl, you look beat, they can take it as a compliment. <laughs> you look good, girl. You look me. Moving on. The next thing I have is fish. So fish, when I was growing up, I wasn't really too familiar with the trans community. So to me, a real woman, well, I can't even say real woman. A woman was fish. Fish is just a woman. Like, fish. Like, just like, I don't know how to describe that. It's just, that's what fish is. If someone say, oh, she's real fish or she's fish. That means she's a woman. Trans people are fish, or you can be fishy, or yes, not clockable. They have that thing too, but fish is just a woman. It's like if someone says fish, that just means woman. That's what it is. It's that simple. Next, we have key and key key. Now, these words are simultaneously together because you can key key and you can also key, but also if you're familiar with the ballroom scene, you know more about the key key scene. 
um, key and key key basically just mean good time or a laugh. Like, so if I said, girl, that's a key, that just means, girl, that is funny. Like, girl, I'm about to key with you real quick. Girl, let's key key. Let's get down, get these laughs out. Let's key key. But also, you can go to a key key, which is just a good environment, just good laughs and a good time. So if someone says, girl, let's key key, that just means let's go out, let's have a good time. So, that's what kiki means but also i can say girl this is a really a key that just means girl this is really funny like we really need to get into this and there's an example of this is by saying the real key of this video is that i don't know what i'm doing so the funny thing about this video is it may seem like i know what i'm doing i have no idea what i'm doing but that's it i think i'm on the final word i'm actually proud of myself oh my god kudos to me round of applause thank you thank you all right Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. I think we did good. One, two, three, four, five. I gave y'all a good, I gave y'all some good amount of words. Now remember, if you are not gay, you really shouldn't be using this lingo. Especially if you are, mm, how do I say this? How can I put this the nicest way possible? Don't worry about it. If you ain't gay, you really shouldn't use this, but this video was to instruct you on how to understand it. And if you have to use it because clearly there's no other language to use, then here's, this is what the stuff means. Maybe you, you know, you'll get kidnapped, be hostage overseas and you will have to use this language. You never know, girl. <laughs> it may help you. But yes, this is Gay Lingo one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like this video and please share this video. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe below and click the bell so you can get notifications. My videos are all over the place, random time. So I just want you guys to know when they're posting. I don't know when I'm posting this, honestly. Because it's nighttime on a Saturday now. I may post this Sunday. I may post it Monday. Girl, I may post it and be like, oh, I'm sick. But also, thank you so much again for everyone that has watched and subscribed all this time. I'm recovering for the flu, so I do apologize. I was supposed to give you guys a video last week, but I had the flu. But I'm back now, so what's up? But this is Gay Lingo 101. I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.